The Fiorano Strait bore witness to a riveting spectacle when the Ferrari SF24 roared to life for its maiden 15-kilometer shakedown. This was not just another test drive, it was a crucial examination that would verify the functioning of each and every component. As the SF24 took its first strides, it was clear that there are some important areas where the Marinello engineers focused on to fix some of the key weaknesses of the SF23 car from last year. While it is true that the first impressions of the Ferrari SF24 were quite positive, it is clear that we have to wait for the Bahrain preseason testing session for more relevant confirmation of the car's true potential this season. Now let's delve into the analysis of the Ferrari SF24 suspension system. While the suspension layout of the Ferrari SF24 is not a radical departure from its predecessor, the SF23, the devil is in the details. Delving into the technical aspects of the SF24's suspension system, one could observe a clear quest for the anti-dive effect. This is achieved through the upper wishbone's inclination, with the front arm now at the chassis limit to enhance the anti-dive effect. Unlike the SF23, the steering tie rod is now separated from the lower arm, reflecting the steering component's increased aerodynamic role. The configuration of the lower arms is also crucial, aimed at stabilizing the platform during braking. The front suspension's overall design represents an effective evolution rather than a revolution. The lower wishbone's placement, significantly lower than before, is facilitated by a chassis modification. Shifting our gaze upwards, we notice other differences with the SF23. The upper triangle is more rearward compared to the lower one, increasing the caster of the front suspension and enabling a wider dynamic camber in corners. This change enhances cornering grip by allowing for a larger tire contact patch during cornering. Switching to the rear, we find additional innovations. The pull rod suspension has been revised, though the arm's position remains largely unchanged. The upper wishbone now uses a larger surface, with the rear arm positioned further rearward. The front arm has been slightly lowered to improve anti-squat and stabilize the platform during acceleration. The lower triangle, where the half shaft is positioned to transmit power to the wheels, has been moved rearward to generate a dynamic caster effect during acceleration. This modification allows the rear wheels to turn appropriately, ensuring maximum tire contact. The most significant change is the suspension tie rod's position. Unlike the SF23, where the tie rod was an aerodynamic obstacle, it now assumes a position almost perpendicular to the direction of the incident flow, crucial for performance. With these modifications, the SF24 suspension system is not a revolution, but a sharp and effective evolution of previously seen concepts. All these changes in the SF24 suspension system are not just for show, they have a profound impact on the car's performance. The modifications allow for a wider dynamic camber in corners, improving the vehicle's cornering grip. This means the tire maintains a larger contact patch with the ground during cornering phases, keeping the car stable and responsive. Additionally, the suspension system has been designed to improve anti-squat and stabilize the platform during acceleration, enhancing the vehicle's agility and speed. The dynamic caster effect during acceleration ensures the rear wheels turn appropriately for maximum contact and grip. Inside the gearbox, the entire area has been significantly tapered, and a channel of air of considerable size has been created. This feeds the beam wing and diffuser with flows from side pods and underfloor, improving the aerodynamics of the car. Furthermore, changes to the diffuser keel allow for better air expansion from under the car, potentially providing significant performance advantages. In the end, the Ferrari SF24's suspension system is a marvel of engineering that takes performance to the next level.